There we go. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 11 of the Just Ask Vodcast. Very excited to have you joining us, uh, whether you're listening, whether you're watching. Uh, I'm just happy to have you uh, learning with us today. We're joined by Anise Bockwell of the Luminous Group. Thank you so much. Uh, Anise is a guide for organizations and leaders to help them reach the transformation that they desire. So I'm really happy to have her uh, chatting with us today. So thank you so much, Anise. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we'll we'll jump right in um, with just ask. We're we're really wanting to hear from different individuals about their like how they became the speaker that they are, how they um, interact and deal with being in front of people, whether it's on video or whether it's in front of a room of people and their, uh, their goal is to get their message across. Um, and I mean, my personal goal with this uh, initiative is to become a much better host and interviewer. Uh, so it's kind of throwing myself right into that. And what's really cool is when I get to interview somebody that I we've, we were chatting just a little bit before we went um, we went live with this is that we we kind of we feel like we know each other, but it's just kind of that that Facebook you know where we kind of see each other pop up and we have mutual friends. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's it's I'm really excited and and very curious to to, to hear about uh, what you do. Awesome. I'm I'm excited to be here. And it is totally weird that we yeah that thing that Facebook does that just makes us feel like we're friends. But we'll see by the end of this if we're actually friends. <laughs> <laughs> we can decide. <laughs> do you like guacamole? I do. I love it. Okay. Perfect. We're done. Oh, perfect. I make a mean <laughs> one actually. So if you get my good books, I can make you one. Oh, perfect. I like it. I'm going to make a note of that. Makes a mean guac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On my resume. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least, uh, do you remember the first time that you got up in front of uh, a room of people and had to uh, share a message? In my, in all of my existence, I think I was, you know, in grade school, uh, right. really. And, and and then in, in my professional life, I, I don't know, it always just feels like it's always been there. It's always been part yeah. of my experience. Um, but really, I, I remember speaking in front of, you know, doing our speeches in public school and having a great time with it and doing some, you know, presentations, you know, from that young, really that young age, I think it's something that we've all kind of done forever in some capacity, whether we kept right. it up in our professional <laughs> professional world or not, um, <laughs> we started it somewhere. Um, but it professionally when I did, no, I can't remember the day. It just feels like a, a natural progression. Right. So, and I find that, I find that interesting. Was there, was there nerves when you first started like in, in the professional space maybe maybe um but more nerves about you know because my background which you don't know so i'll give you a little bit is yeah. uh, i'm a chemical and biochemical engineer by training oh and, incredible yeah so, <laughs> so my first you know professional i remember this is kind of a fun story i was 26 and i traveled to israel on my own for uh, a presentation that I was giving to uh, a room full of men. There was 200 men in the room and one woman named Veronique, Veronique from France. <laughs> and, and, she, and I was presenting technical information about some pilots that we were running um, on, on desalination plants. I'm in the, I was in the water industry for a long time. And cool. so when I think about, you know, what is the message I was trying to get across there or, or, you know, how did I feel? Yeah, I was 26 and, you know, yeah. internationally traveling and speaking in front of 200 men. Like she legit was the only other woman in there. And <laughs> I was by far the youngest, like by far. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I was pretty nervous that day. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you do you still get the the nervous jitters when you get up in front of the room now? Uh, sometimes, uh, yeah. but it's really more excitement. Like mm. I've kind of been that person, like, give me a mic. I really like a mic. Um, <laughs> and so it like, cause I think I just have so much fun with it that, that yeah, sure. There's a nerves. I'm like usually sweating a little bit, but it just takes a second to like get in my groove and then that all goes away. Right. That's amazing. So now, now you feel like you have much more comfortability, like just being able to grab the mic and just jump up there and, and start talking. Yeah. And, and that's developed over the years. Cause I've done some really formal, like lots and lots of formal presentations, you know, describing data, describing, you know, results from tests that we've run or, 
you know, pitching out business plans or, you know, whatever, really formal. Right. Um, but then as that has evolved into where I am now in, in Luminous Group and in front of people all of the time is that the feedback I often get is you're so honest. And right. so now when I when I have that conversation, just like this conversation here, whether it's two of us, there is an audience somewhere eventually. Right, or, or, right. You know, <laughs> um, look at them all. Look at, look at all of them. Um, there's, uh, I think when you can work from that place of honesty, then that all that fear sort of goes away for me anyways. Mm. Um, and so it's been that journey of just how honest can I be? How real can I be? How much of myself can I share? And that's really been the journey through uh, the Luminous Group. That, that's amazing. And so I would say that like that honesty is also driven by um, your passion for the subject that you're sharing as well. Would that be would that be the case? Absolutely. And and the confidence that the conversations need to happen, right? That right. that I really believe in the conversation. And so how I show up and how I participate in that conversation is all I really have to to focus on, right? I, I like right. I know you mentioned that you want to get that message across. Well, I want to invite people into the conversation. So I'm actually not really trying to get a message across so much as I have a little bit to share but I really want to have those conversations and open those up. Right. So like how much preparation uh, would go into, would go into when you, you're um, bringing all these individuals together to have those conversations, how much prep work goes into making that happen? Um, when we bring people together, because we have the conversation, I do a little bit of keynote speaking, but often yeah. I'm, I'm in front of a group and really facilitating a group, guiding them through, uh, you know, whatever it is that's important for them to be working on, especially, you know, in a company setting um, or in a, you know, like we said before, in a school setting, depending on how, where the, the, I'd say the client group is, um, that there is preparation because intention is really important. And so I never want to assume what the intentions are. And so right. we do that prep work to understand what are our intentions, you know, what are our hopes and fears around delving into this, how do we, you know, how do I want to, to do that invitation? What are the things to lead us into that discussion that isn't presumptuous and isn't about driving an outcome, but more of an offering an invitation and really allowing people to decide if they want to be willing participants or not. That's right. really where that magic is. Because if you have their willingness, well then, and you start to understand what their intentions are, then you know, we can, we can do all kinds of really profound and magical work. That's, that's amazing. And so really, it's about like, finding that that perfect balance of making sure that you're getting that first initial message across, making sure that they can, they feel like they can engage and be a part of the conversation, while also figuring out ways to pull some of that information, should the group not be open to begin with. Yeah, and I always say it's okay if they're not open. And we work with the trust level in the room. So as a, you know, if I'm speaking or facilitating, uh, I kind of, they, they're all sort of in one bucket for me, is the work, when you ask about what is the preparation, it's, you know, it's my preparation, preparing with the client, but then also how am I showing up? You know, am I fully present? What am, you know, what am I willing to share? How do I make it so that I'm at like my best self, my best version of myself. My energy feels good. I feel well rested. I feel well hydrated. You know, all right. of those really sort of fundamental things. Um, or am I am I fearful? And do I need to get some of those out? Do I need to write some of them out? Do I need to call? You know, the, the phone a friend. I always say like use a phone a friend. You get to right. you know have that conversation and and, and <laughs> help those fears out so that you can really make a conscious choice about what am I bringing to the table? How and not really what, but how am I bringing myself to the table and getting really intentional on that? Right. So would you call that kind of like a, a pre speaking engagement ritual setting that attention? It's a, intention. It's a practice, yeah. I think. Mm. Um, and not so much if you practice it throughout your days, then it becomes um, easier and easier to show up honestly and with intention so I wouldn't say it's like a, not like a pre-game ritual by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it is a, a practice that I do bring into my life every single day so that I'm more prepared those days. 
Right. No, that's that's yeah. amazing. And that's something too. Um, like we've had, I, I like hearing that it's it's just, it's become like a part of your your everyday. Yeah. Is, is building and setting that attention or intent. I keep saying attention, yeah. intention. Yeah. Um, but like, I know like you hear of individuals that uh, eat a certain food. I think that plays more into like the sports. Uh, but then there's also certain music that people listen to or they, they have meditation or there's just these varying degrees of things uh, because some people are so... Uh, can get like have some anxiety behind speaking in front of people. They need to kind of psych themselves right up to be able to overcome that to get themselves out on stage. Yes, um, yes, and I think that you know, do whatever works for you. Clearly, right. obviously. Um, yeah. But I think there's a for me. I've say I've taken a bit of a softer approach, um, or like a less rigid approach. It feels like for me that I, I. I'm really passionate about what we're doing and I'm really, I really care about those people in the audience and really want to I sort of think that one of the core reasons why I do this work is that I want to create a safe space because mm. when we feel safe physically, psychologically, emotionally, um, we can be more honest with ourselves and with one another. Right, And that's where we start to break down barriers, where we can have conversations that we've never had before, where we can create, where we've never created before. Because a lot of people don't know that creation or co-creation takes courage. Yeah. And to create the environment for that courage to exist, we, we work on the environment. So how do we make that as safe as possible? And so I always feel like my role, whether I'm you know, speaking in front of a group or I'm in a circle, I do a lot of my work in a circle, you know, regardless of where I am, it's to be that calm, that grounded sort of energy or, you know, placeholder so that people can, hmm, they can kind of feel that essence and we can shift a little bit of that trust. And then we get to work with whatever trust levels in the room. And right. so if we're in those conversations, I always say whatever trust levels in the room is perfect. And we're likely going to build it over the day or we're going to build it over the next couple of hours. Um, but the pace that you build it in and where we start is always perfect. There's, you know, we always start off per in the perfect place. Right. Yeah. Um, and through creating that, that safe, that safe place, uh, what, like, what do you hope to achieve um, through sharing and being able to create that safe space? So depending on who I'm working with, we have different, they're working on different things. Sometimes it's very business right. related, but all of the pieces that are consistent, it doesn't matter which company I'm working with, which executive leadership team, which maybe high school group. Um, we work with uh, grade nine girls and do some amazing work with them. I love it. It What the consistency is there through those meaningful connections and that safe space is that they start to realize how much the same they are hmm. instead of focusing on how different they are because our brains and our minds are trained to spot the differences, right? There's even activities like in magazines, right? Spot the six differences. It's like <laughs> everything in our life is saying what's different. Her nose is this way and my nose is that way and her butt's this way and my butt's that way or like right. whatever, right? We're really taught to notice those differences, but as humans, like, I mean, I don't have data to support this, but I think we're like 99.99% the same. Hmm. But we're so trained to spot the differences that we forget how similar we are. And that's right. when we don't feel safe because we're always comparing the differences. So when we create that safe space, we can talk, have that meaningful connection. We start to see just how similar we are, how close our hopes and fears actually are to one another. Who cares about like the color of our skin and our height and our background and our, you know, all of our, all of our things, our religion, our belief systems, right. our sexuality. Like I always say, yeah, it's all welcome in. Like it's all welcome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cause I really think that's like the 0.1% or 0.01% that's different of us. Right. What are, what's, where are we similar? Where can we connect? Where can we find the truth? And how do we alleviate the assumptions that are keeping us from connecting? And so when we work with assumptions in a safe environment, so much can be alleviated. And what comes ultimately is clarity. And with clarity, you can make powerful decisions. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's cool. It, I, love, I love that moment 
Um, and I, I try and watch for it every single, every single show uh, that we do. It's that moment of I'm talking about what I love and my passion yeah. and like your, your face, your face just lit up. Like I see it, I saw it and I see it now all across your face. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's so cool um, to see individuals working in their passion and what they care about and what mm-hmm. they're excited about. Um, so that's, that's really incredible that you're, you're building and creating that space for individuals to, to, uh, to thrive. Uh, yeah, I love that you use that word. That's exactly it. I feel like <laughs> we're in so much survival mode everywhere. And when we shift into thriving, because it's accessible to us, we're right in, it's right next to surviving. Like thriving is right next to surviving. And when we shift our perspective, we can walk into thriving. And when we're in thriving mode, what we can create, what we can build in our businesses, what we can do as a community, the potential just skyrockets. And so I love that you picked up on that word because it's, it's, exactly, <laughs> it's exactly what we're working towards is how do we shift into thriving and how do we get more conscious about it? Right. Right. And so when we can set up the conditions so that the group that I'm working with can build their own evidence as quickly as possible, I feel like that's my job. Because the faster they can build evidence that they're shifting to into thriving, the more they believe in themselves and they believe in one another and they believe in their capabilities and their confidence and self-esteem and everything shifts. So it's less about, I'm trying to convey a message. I'm inviting them to create their own message. That's, that's amazing. And for, for individuals that are maybe um, just entering into the world of get up, getting up in front of people, whether it's to uh, invite conversation or whether to share a message that they have, uh, do you have any, like, do you have a, a, like a tip for them to be able to kind of take that first jump? I have, I have four. Can I, can I oh, do four? Amazing. Okay. Yeah, definitely okay. you can. So, <laughs> so they're, and they're not mine. So I will give credit where credit's due. Um, I, a, an amazing woman named Dr. Angelise Arian, she uh, wrote a book called The Fourfold Way. And in that book, she has four guiding principles of engagement. So when I think if somebody's going up on stage, you're, you're really looking for engagement, right? Right. And so the first one and this is a lifelong practice, so it's not like a you're not going to nail it on the first go around, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but is to choose to be fully present in the moment. Hmm. And so I think that's where some of those rituals come in, right? Like maybe you're blasting music, maybe you know you're meditating before or whatever. Whatever tool you need to use is choose to be fully present in the moment because that's where all of your power is. And so anyone getting up on stage, anyone who has something passionate that they want to share, all their power is in that present moment. So that's the first principle. Love it. The second one is to pay attention to what has heart and meaning. So if that person who's getting up on stage and is kind of nervous, if you're connected to what has heart and meaning for you, that's the message that you're sharing. You just get to decide that that's it. That's just good enough, right? That's it. There's no other secret sauce. It's just your message. And that's awesome. Uh, the third one is to tell truth without blame or judgment. And when it's you against you before you get on that stage, <laughs> what's your truth, right? What's right. your truth? And sometimes when I lose sight of my truth, I just do something really simple like Olivia and Samantha are my daughters. Olivia and Samantha are my daughters. This is true. No one can dispute that fact. And I can find that truth so I can build on it. So anchoring yourself in something really true before you get on stage. And it might be like, I'm so passionate about this. I love what I'm doing. I believe in the message. Whatever the truth is for you. Or if it's like, my children are my children. Like whatever truth you need, <laughs> it can be as simple as possible. As long as it feels true, you can feel that and release any judgment. Because before you get on that stage, the only judgment that you're battling is the one in your head. I like it. So that truth works. That one, pay attention to what has, uh, uh, tell the truth without blame or judgment is powerful for groups, obviously for one another, but it's, it's, I think the most powerful for yourself. What are the judgments that are making you nervous that are getting in your way? You know, what are you looking for there? So helping to really release those and just anchor in your truth. And then the last one is being open to outcome instead of attached to outcome. 
Because what you can create in a room full of people plus your passion far exceeds what one brain can think about, can consider, can create. You're walking into an energy that you're connecting with a crowd. And so the ahas that they have, the, you know, the oh no's that they have, right? Awesome. Lear- learning happens either <laughs> way, right? Right. And whatever message, whatever they get out of it, trust that it's perfect for them instead of trying to drive to an outcome that you have already played out in your mind. Hmm. Releasing I, I, that need yeah. is always humbling for me. Always humbling because what is co-created in that room is always far greater than what I have the power to create myself. Right. And I feel like that, that takes some, not, maybe not all of the pressure off, but that takes some of the pressure off to be like, you know what? I know I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. Yep. I know it. Like this is, that's my truth. I know what I'm talking about. This is this, this is that. Yep. But I think sometimes you can get hung on, hung up on making sure that your message gets across the exact way you want it to. And opening yourself up to being say, you know what, this is, this is the grand theme that I want to have. And this is what I'm hoping to get across, but not being hell bent on (laughs) achieving that, I think take some of that away. Exactly. Because how do you know what that person needs? Right. You have no idea. Right. You know what you have to offer, but how it's, how it's received and how it's interpreted is not in your control. And so when you are, think about it, when you're like, I kind of like imagine your mind, can you, can you see my hands going to, yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. else can see this. So it's less impactful for the audience, but I'm um, mimicking when, you. Yeah. <laughs> when you can decide in that moment before you go on stage to be fully present and know that you are exactly where you need to be in this moment and nothing in the past matters and nothing in the future matters, just this moment, you connect. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love. I'm fired up. And this is my truth, you know, just anchor into that element of your truth and your existence. And then you step on that stage and you just say, I'm just going to deliver. Like, I'm just going to off, I'm going to offer, not even deliver, scratch, take that word out. I I am going to offer with my heart wide open, which is totally vulnerable. And I am going to allow the impact to be whatever it needs to be for each individual in the room. And I'm going to trust that the combination of them and me in the room, simply because they're here, is perfect. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. I love that. Yeah. We can just offer. I think that's that's so fantastic. Um, Anissa, if anybody wants to... Uh, get a hold of you, find more from you. I know you've got a lot out there. Yeah. Um, how, how do they find you? They can find me on my website at uh, luminousgroup.ca. We'll post it below. Yeah, and they can find me on Instagram. <laughs> it's luminous.life. My handle's at luminous.life. Uh, and they can find me on LinkedIn as a needs box. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun uh, chatting with you about this subject. I love, uh, I love just seeing you light up and the four tips that you offered too. I had never really heard them in that way before. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really excited to kind of be able to dive deeper into those, but also to be able to offer those up to all the viewers and the listeners. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Awesome. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. I hope to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we definitely will. I had a great time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is episode number 11 of the Just As podcast. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Anise. Thanks. Thanks.